More where that came from. Time to even the odds. Let's settle this. Let's settle this.
your life, beast. That makes it mine. Because there is something to be learned of strength, beast, even within your empty shell, and it will be needed in the times ahead. No, that you shall not do. You will not bring harm to the exile, and if you do, beast, I shall break you. The screams of your tribe of primitives, the scene of lying blinded with the huntress's blaster at your skull, I shall make it so that is all you hear and see for the rest of your days. Even your madness will not save you if you bring harm to the exile. Know this. Oh, the life debts of your people, the life debt you have twisted with your hate, I felt it within you. I shall promise you this, beast. Unlike the red-maned Huntress, as long as you are loyal, I shall never show you mercy. No pity. All it requires is that you immerse yourself in another lie. The exile, you shall be his servant until I call upon you. Do this thing, and I shall grant your desire.
I certainly hope that rude C7 unit didn't send you over here. Those more recent models have no etiquette programming whatsoever. I think he should be replaced or shipped down to maintenance to direct droids there. But I cannot seem to convince my masters of the logic of the request. Oh, I wouldn't go that far, despite what others would say. A number designation for a C7 unit means far more than an integer increase. Some droids undergo radical changes with each generation. Each numeric jump in sequence can have wide-ranging changes in functionality and temperament. But then, you are a new model yourself. I wouldn't expect you to understand how it feels. Now, was there something I could help you with? I see. Well, good day to you then. I am sorry, but only authorized cargo droids are allowed into the warehouse. I cannot permit you to enter due to the sensitive cargo. No. In fact, I do not have you on my list of Codin's acquisitions. How did you get in here? I see. Well, I have no current use for you. I'll assign you to C6E3. He needs the help to make up for his inferior programming. If you do not wish to comply with these instructions, I can have you given a memory wipe and behavioral reprogramming. Good. Now report to C6E3. You will be assisting him. absolutely infuriates me. Needs help to do my job, do I? I would be happy to help you, but as long as that C7 unit is perched at the door, I can't. Well, if the C7 unit were to be disabled, my programming would require me to take over his responsibilities in his absence. Yes, I would be willing to give you access to the next room. Yes, what is it? You can't be serious. I am not in need of the activation. What are you talking about? How dreadful. Restricted. Please return to your designated area. Please. 
please excuse my companion. He is easily excitable and takes our duty very seriously, in the hopes of avoiding an incident. I ask you to please return to your post. Door? I'm sorry. I don't believe I know what you are referring to. You must be mistaken. There is nothing of the sort. Now please, move along. Lying to you? But that would go against my programming. Please, as I said, you should return to your post. Now, now, T1N1. He is right about your size. Being touchy about it won't change anything. Really? You're much too sensitive about these things. Oh my, this is what I was afraid of. You have made him angry.
Oh my, you startled me. What are you doing here? I monitor the transponder codes of all ships leaving the docks, then transmit departure information for any of Boga the Hutt's freighters. The information is sent to a remote computer system. Oh, I see. In that case, I will upload the transponder codes to you. And here's the blank transponder card you need. You're welcome. Now, if you'll excuse me, I must go back to monitoring the traffic. It is important that relevant departure information is relayed as quickly as possible. supposed to be here. Confidence statement. You have the list of Voga's launch codes. You will give these to us now, or else we will be forced to take drastic action. Surprised statement. You are foolish to think we will allow you to take that information back to your master. Amused query. I think you will find the odds are somewhat in our favor. Now will you be giving us the codes, or not? Incredulous statement. Then we will have to take them from you, which I assure you was our preference to begin with. and report to C7E3 for assignment. Wait, where are you going? You are not authorized to leave the warehouse. There you are. What kept you? Yeah, I know there's droids in the warehouse. So what? He says he's got the transponder codes to Voga's freighters, one that can be picked up by Goto. We could go to the repair shop by the landing pad to overhaul the Ebonhawk's codes. From there, we should make a nice target for Goto. Yeah, right. You're the one who wanted to sell him to Goto in the first place. Look at Cameron in 
doso ran we no chabi. Do ran tamana sobu. Hobby to see what you turn over there, much that the new one you want for now, and I'll give it as near my but to do run and I'll have a new us know in the house. Tono ran the manakan, the poinchua, than a bewe, tandy grotto. More where that came from.
Let's settle this. More where that came from. Just say the word.
I hear you. Thank <laughs> you. 
Dear
It is simply difficult to be in so many places at once. Hollow technology is currently the most effective and convenient way to communicate my commands over vast distances. At least until Aerotech develops the new Hollow transceiver within two standard months, but by then it will simply be too late. There is something important to me I need protected. The Republic, it is broken. What happened on Paragus has set in motion events that I can no longer control. Not to be melodramatic, but I fear it has broken the galaxy irrevocably. This has occupied much of my attention, and there seems to be no predictable way to resolve the situation. In one standard month, the Republic will collapse. Not due to war or secession, but because it lacks the infrastructure to support itself. It is unknown to all but a few, but the Republic lost the Jedi Civil War. At the time of their defeat, the Republic was on the brink of collapse. Rather than remain and continue his campaign against the Republic, however, Revan chose to leave known space. A frustrating turn of events as a rallying figurehead could have done much to restore order. There is something moving in the galaxy that lies beyond the ability of my instruments to detect or predict. I believe it to be a legacy of a sin, but I have been unable to determine the source. Whatever this presence is, it is staging strikes at key figures throughout the Republic, and through some unknown means, it is causing the destruction of worlds. Qatar, a Miraluka world in the Mid-Rim was one such place. I have reason to suspect there was a gathering of Jedi on that world when it was rendered lifeless. I cannot find any pattern in these attacks, and it is a source of frustration to me. There is some clue, however, that perhaps the Jedi are linked to these attacks, or that the targets are significant in some way I have yet to discover. You misunderstand me. I do not wish to stop the Sith any more than I wish to stop the Jedi. It is simply important to me that the infighting amongst these Jedi religious branches be resolved so the galaxy may be put back together. I do not care which one triumphs. I only want the universe to settle down for a while, catch its breath. All these constant crises are getting somewhat repetitive. You could say I am something of a patriot. Although I was unable to serve during the troubles with the Mandalorians or against the aggressors known as Malak and Revan, I am able and willing to serve now. The problem is, I can find no side to choose. Both are hidden from me, as they seem to be hiding from each other. Irritating. It is like a Dejaric board, where neither player can see the other, nor see all the pieces. It is not a fair game, an equitable game. Under guard, 
I must see to the defense of my ship. Announcement. We seek to make Goto aware of our services, allowing us to facilitate communication and terminate hostilities in the galaxy. If that means blowing up planets, slaughtering entire species, or allying ourselves with the Sith, then that is the logical choice. Our predecessor would never understand our directives. He was slow, weak, and his vocabulator was prone to static. Ratio achieved. Failing master. Failing master.
my life is yours. <coughs> what is it? Huh. I will sign. Uh. to battle. I hear you.
Yes.
Yes. This 
This shall not stop us for long.
What is it? I hear you. My life is yours. What is it? How may I serve? What is it? What is it? Yes. What is it?
Yes. My life is yours. I hear you. My life is yours. How may I serve?
What is it?
Returned from exile, though I do not know why. You were always difficult to read, when you were tied to the Force, and even more when it was lost to you. But I can sense the death of others upon your hands. I know how this will end. But I will answer your questions, if only for some measure of peace. In exchange, I wish only the answer to one. Why have you done this to the Jedi? Was it revenge or something more? But you are. Whatever this threat is, it leaves echoes in the Force, wounds that do not heal. It is something we had never felt before, until you stood before us in judgment, and we exiled you. You are more involved than you know. Whatever is striking at us, it is something tied to you, something you had experienced and survived. Some of us sought to understand you, to find you. It seems we succeeded, even though we thought you were lost to us. Now, as we hoped, you have returned, and you know nothing that could help us. Such irony. What I can tell you, I will. They have scattered, but there is purpose in their movements. It is both to hunt and draw out our enemies. Somehow, they, we, are being targeted through the Force, and when Jedi gather, 
we are vulnerable. So we have chosen places where it is difficult to sense others through the Force, whether on planets dense with life or touched by war. In such places, we may conceal ourselves, gather information without presenting ourselves as targets. It was part of Kavar's plan. Yes, he felt if our enemy cannot detect us, then perhaps they would believe themselves victorious and show themselves. And we knew that the war would be lost if we continued to act as we had. I do not know where they wander now. There are few of us, though. Too few. And I have not heard from them in some time. Atris, but I had thought she had gone to Qatar with the others. Yes, she holds the last of the Jedi teachings. It is good she survived. Very well. It is a long story, but there is no harm in you knowing. And someone should know. Only a handful of us remained after the Jedi Civil War, barely a hundred in number. Then, even that hundred began to vanish in places where the Force seemed blind. The only pattern we determined is that when Jedi gathered, they were seen no more. At the last Jedi Conclave on the Miraluka world of Qatar, the entire planet was wiped out, an entire race destroyed, because the Jedi chose to gather there. It was only then that we realized we were facing something far more powerful than we knew how to fight. We could not allow the fact that when we gathered, we placed everything around us at risk. A Jedi's life is sacrifice, but we could not allow our presence or actions to endanger others. And we could not fight an enemy that will not reveal itself. But any Jedi, anyone who was strong in the Force, who attempted to track down such a threat, vanished without a trace. I know little about it. I know more of the absence it leaves behind than its face. Whatever this threat was, it was targeting us and everything around us. Yet it was somehow weak enough that it was afraid to confront us openly. If it believed us defeated, then perhaps it would finally show itself. It was a faint hope that it was the best we had. It was Kavar's plan. He was always the greatest tactician among us, and had seen war more than the rest of us. Very well. We told you it was because you followed Revan to war, but you ask because you are not certain of that answer, nor were we. The day we cast you out, that is the moment I decided to leave the Order, because I do not believe we truly faced the reasons you were exiled, and if we do not examine such truths, then we are already lost. I think it was because we were afraid. It is a difficult thing to live one's life with the Force. To see a vision of what it would be like to be severed from it, it is more frightening than you know. Very well. I had thought perhaps that here upon the Smuggler's Moon, I might find some evidence of the threat we faced. The bounties on Jedi and their disappearance. I did not believe the two were connected, but there was a chance. And the strong currents of life here on Nar Shaddaa make perceiving a Force user difficult. I could use it to cloak my movements and watch without being discovered. Very well. Is that what you think? We did no such thing. But it is a technique that has been used as punishment in the past, yes. It is a rare sentence, and to my knowledge it has only been done once, at a moment where a Jedi discipline has failed. What caused your loss, I fear, was different. I am not certain I understand it. We did not understand it fully then, and only recently do I feel we may have become enlightened. The other masters may have more knowledge of this, but I do not, and I do not know if they even live. Does it matter? It seems your power has returned. Perhaps the loss was not a loss at all. Very well. Ah, so the records of your trial were found. Good. Sometimes I think this galaxy would be a better place if there were less Jedi secrets. But I have no answer for you, as much as I would like to give one. We vowed never to speak of it. And although I would not keep promises to Jedi, I keep promises I make to others. And Kavar was a friend. If we were gathered as one, then the promise might be revoked. 
Until then, I can say nothing. Very well. Yes, such bonds are a connection that can be formed at moments of crisis, or in the slow understanding that grows between master and apprentice. It is most common between two beings who are sensitive to the Force. It allows the transmission of feelings, of influence. It was something you were gifted with, as I recall, before your fall. You formed such attachments easier than most, even to those who could feel the Force only faintly. Even Brooke could not ignore it, which is saying something. That is most unusual and unnatural. I have never heard of a bond of such strength. There were a few within the Order who knew more than I did of such bonds, but their students were few, lost in the Mandalorian Wars. It was rumored that Revan studied such bonding deeply, both through the Jedi histories and with certain teachers, before he left the Order and went to war. I do not know. A bond between two living beings is not something easily broken. It is not a choice. It is like breaking a feeling, like turning away from the Force. One of you would have to die, but even then, the bond wouldn't go away. It would simply... it would simply be empty. A wound. Very well. Is that what you think? It, it, what, the other, does it? Now, now I must take up the role I was ready to cast aside. This threat has finally revealed itself, and we Jedi will need to stand together. I did not speak fully of what I have felt. Staying on Nar Shaddaa, it is an exile of sorts, one that I have chosen. I, too lost a Padawan on Malachor, not to the battle, but to the alternative, to the teachings that Revan brought from the unknown regions. And I was not the only Jedi Master to watch a student turn on them. No, no, they were not to blame, but many of the Order did so. It was a difficult time, a time of strong emotion. Perhaps the Council, perhaps the Order itself, had grown arrogant in their teachings. It is easy to cast blame, but it is perhaps time the Order accepted responsibility for their teachings and their arrogance, and come to recognize that perhaps we are flawed. Not once did I hear one of the Council claim responsibility for Revan, for Exar Kun, for Ulik, for Malak, or for you. Yet, you were the only one who came back from the wars to face our judgment. And rather than attempting to understand why you did what you did, we punished you instead. Our one chance to see where we had gone wrong, and we cast it aside. And now, that decision has come back to us and may carry with it our destruction. Perhaps there is something wrong in us, in our teachings. And though I tried, I could not cause that thought to leave me. So I left the Council. And I was not the only one. That is why many scattered, and why many in the Republic do not trust us, and why we do not trust ourselves. Make no mistake, I am no Jedi. This is the end, you see. After this, there will be nothing, and I think it will be for the best. Do you wish to do battle now? I have nothing more to say. to learn anything from my death, then you are wrong. If battle is the only thing you yet learn from me, 
then that is the only victory this day. What are you waiting for? form is still new to you. Let us see if you have the years to back it up. Yeah. Yeah. 